Hello there YouTube, Michael Bell here um, and today um, in continuation from my previous video blog in which I was looking for some software in which I could sync video outside of Pro Tools um, I'm going to be looking at non-lethal applications Video Slave 2 which you are currently looking at now um, to give you some kind of back uh, story from people who didn't see my previous video blog um, I was having some issues in running video within Pro Tools um, it's only something I've really noticed lately um, but it really has been getting in the way of my work. Um, just um, when I first import video in, it would kind of take quite a while to bring the video into Pro Tools itself. Um, then it would give me messages that it couldn't draw thumbnails. Um, I was finding that coming back to a project um, the next day, for instance, um, it would kind of take quite a while to load up. Um, Pro Tools would kind of beach ball for up to kind of 20 minutes at times uh, before I could actually use it. Um, and then during actual composition, you know, I go to a particular queue or sound design, for instance, I'd be kind of trying to get a sound to sync up exactly with the picture. Um, so as you guys, I'm sure, will know, you'll be going back and hitting play and then moving your, your MIDI note a bit more and going back and hitting play and moving your MIDI note or moving your audio clip or whatever it may be. Um, and it was taking kind of, you know, up to 20 seconds to play um, the video, um, which was kind of a little counterproductive. Um, you know, given we work with, with kind of film, we need our DAW to, to kind of handle it um, effectively. Now, you know, I'm not entirely sure kind of why it was doing that. Um, I think it's probably down to just Codex Pro Tools not liking a particular video format. Um, you know, but either way, it just it was not useful. Um, and uh, that's that's kind of like a, in no way like an attack on on Pro Tools, you, you know, for any kind of composition, mixing, mastering, sound design, dubbing, anything like that. You you'll find me in Pro Tools. It is my D, my go to DAW. Um, but it's about time I felt that I kind of got some specialist software that could just take that video load away from Pro Tools. Um, and my answer to that has been Video Slave. Um, so yeah, I want to do a quick video basically documenting how to A, set up Video Slave within Pro Tools um, and B, kind of how, how amazing, to be honest, I've found it to be um, within my workflow. I'm genuinely very, very impressed. Um, I've come across this software for quite a while now. It's been, it's been, it's been, been kind of talked about on VI Control and, and sort of Scorecast um, over here in London quite a lot, um, kind of... Um, well, over the past kind of couple of years, really, um, but it's it's only really now that I've ventured into it, um, and it's honestly saved me bacon this month. Um, I was working on a pitch, um, and it really wasn't going too well. Lots of crashes, um, and I had to kind of match up quite a lot of audio very tightly to the film. There was a lot of sound design involved. Um, I suppose foley in a way as well, you know. Just it was, I had to kind of get it done, um, and I just I, I couldn't get on with it. So here we are, video slave. Um, it has saved my neck, um, and will pretty much be a part of my workflow, you know, moving forward, probably forever. <laughs> so well done, guys, over there at um, and non lethal applications. Really, really impressed. Um, and here we go. I'm going to go through the setup of it. So. The first thing you kind of want to do, um, I'm going to take you through the Video Slave's kind of preferences menu itself. So if we go up to Video Slave, into Prefs, um, this is the window that you'll get. Um, so very, very simple. We've only got four tabs. The licensing tab is where you're going to put the license code once you purchase this software from uh, Non-Lethal, which you will do because it is amazing. Um, so that's your kind of window that you're going to use um, when you when you first get it. Your general window, a lot of this will be configured for you. So Video Slave um, Virtual. Um, it's worth noting at this point that I am running Video Slave in the box in one machine. So whereas this software has the capability to time sync over LAN, um, so you essentially can run your film on a completely separate computer, which a lot of people do, I am not doing that. Um, reason being, I don't have a screen plugged into my Mac Mini, which is my slave machine, um, and I didn't want to sort of play back the video over um, like a screen share um, uh, capacity, which is, if you see my previous videos on when we're talking about kind of Vienna Ensemble, um, I connect to my Mac Mini via screen share. Um, so I will put up another video in the future, um, demoing kind of um, video slave completely running independently on another machine and time syncing through to Pro Tools. Um, I know it will work fine, um, given how kind of responsive and, and, and very efficient that it is uh, time syncing in the box and given my experience with kind of sending MIDI and audio over LAN, I have absolutely all confidence and faith that sending timecode over LAN is going to be 
a piece of cake. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, a lot of this is going to be set up for you. Um, your default start TC, uh, 0, 1, and then 0, 0 is recurring. That is the same in Pro Tools. Um, if I zoom out and we go into our sub counter here in Pro Tools and I set this to time code, that matches up there as well. Um, there is a little kind of hitch I've found um, in relation to that, which I will cover later. Um, but for now, I want to just go through the, the, the general options here. So I've got like a custom aggregate I.O. setup from when sometimes I've used in the past um, inputs from my Mac itself. Um, I don't particularly do that anymore. I go through um, the, the Onyx Eye, but I've still kind of used this, this preset thing that I've used. So the, the, any sound from um, Video Slave, so any kind of dialogue we've got or, or temp tracks or anything like that, will be going through the Pro, uh, the Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. For you guys, this is going to change basically depending on whatever you use for your actual output. Um, it will kind of default to whatever your output sound card is within your system preferences. Um, displays, this is quite important. So this is telling Video Slave that um, W3 a 2361 is my left hand monitor um, so I'm telling um, Video Slave that when I click this full screen button here um, I want the software to play the video in my left hand screen um, and then overlays I've got on I've set it to time code um, and I've basically it will display in the top left hand corner you can adjust the horizontal and vertical position um, with these kind of uh, uh, sliders accordingly and choose your font other than that, there isn't really too much within Video Slave that I've found that you need to configure. Um, these buttons here are fairly self-explanatory. They just A, turn off the browser window on the left-hand side. Um, this middle one turns off the kind of... Um, uh, once we get a video in here, think, let's get a video in. Let's, let's bring in the trailer here. So I'm literally just dragging this from the other screen, letting go of it here. So this brings up your kind of preview, your thumbnail view, and your um, audio view. I am going to mute the sound here which I can do by either clicking the right channel and the left channel so that they're greyed out, or I can drag the slider from 0dB to basically off um, because I don't want to hear the temp score. Um, it's going to interfere with my personal score. Um, straight away, it's given us information that we're in 25 FPS. It's 1920 and it's a ProRes format. Um, those sorts of things, Pro Tools would, would kind of, well, they tell you the FPS. It wouldn't tell you the ProRes information or the resolution within the actual window. Um, so we're completely ignoring Pro Tools here. All the video information is, is kind of matched up here. Um, now, earlier on I mentioned um, certain glitches you can find here. Um, you have to make sure that your FPS is set up in Pro Tools. So if we come back to Pro Tools, we, we know from Video Slave that it's 25 FPS. You've got to go into Pro Tools, go to your setup window at the top, and choose Session. From there, okay, so this is straight away, this is wrong. This is set to 30, 24, and 30. We need to set really all of these to 25 so that our session is is, is, is sending um, the, you know, the correct time code, uh, uh, FPS rate in terms of time code back to uh, Video Slave. Video Slave just will not work if you have not got that configured. Um, so maybe jumping ahead of myself a little bit, I'm going to talk to you about actually setting up um, Video Slave 2 within Pro Tools. There are basically three kind of key, well probably four key things you need to look at, but within three kind of windows. So when you first come to Pro Tools, make sure you've got um, Video Slave 2 running. Don't necessarily need a film within the within the Video Slave project, but just make sure that it's actually running. So come into Pro Tools, go to your setup window, and you're going to choose this one here, your peripherals. The two windows we're interested in is both the synchronization and the machine control. So within synchronization, we want to choose our MTC generator port to a predefined, and we want to choose Video Slave here. So that's going to basically look at um, the Video Slave uh, engine to, to, to send and receive our time code. Within machine control, this is already enabled for me, we want to enable, again, predefined Video Slave, and we want to set the ID to 127. Don't worry too much about this right now. That is kind of um, intrinsic to when we start looking at the slave machines. So at the moment, I have, I have not got that even configured. It's your synchronization um, and your machine control that you want to make sure that you've got configured within your predefined menus that are kind of within Pro Tools. And hit OK. 
Most importantly, again, I have kind of neglected to do this, um, and you really need to. Go to Pro Tools, go to Preferences, and in your very far window here, you've got Synchronization. You've got to make sure that these two are ticked. Basically, what that does is it, when you kind of clicking around your session and you're jumping around your uh, your sequence of wind um, in in terms of Pro Tools, it sends the time code back to um, uh, video slave so that your video changes when you when you're clicking around. Kind of useful. Um, I didn't have that turned on. Um, then you've got this window here where it says MTC. You need that turned on. That is basically enabling the link between Pro Tools and um, Video Slave. If you don't see this synchronization tab here, um, go to your, your 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 button in your far right corner and enable synchronization. Um, that will then give you that that window. From here, if we go back into Video Slave, this button here basically runs the whole show. So you've got to click that. And that means that it's turned the link on. It's waiting for an incoming sync. It's just found it. It's linked Pro Tools together. Um, one final thing that I mentioned at the beginning um, with regards to these kind of 0, 1 uh, start times. And in Video Slave, again, the 0, 1 start times here. We're in sync. We're ready to go. We're ready to play. I'm going to go back to the session in Pro Tools. I'm going to hit Spacebar. So. Okay, it's working. Fantastic. What had happened to me before is, for some reason, it, the, these, that start time code had ignored me. So, where it's when I go into TC here, the video start time was still set to 0, 0. So, it basically meant that when I hit and went and played my score, and I looked to try and find my film, nothing was playing. You know, um, time code is coming in from Pro Tools here, but nothing's being displayed in terms of, of uh, a film. So you've, you've, you've got to make sure that if that happens, go into TC and make sure that this is basically matched to exactly what it should be, which is starting at 0, 01. That way, when you then go and play your film, um, it's going to match. It's going to play the movie and match uh, correctly. Let's go back and play this where it actually exists. So yeah, we're, we're off and running, basically. You know, um, if I bring these windows close together, you can see that it's basically completely in sync. Um, and I know from when I composed this before, um, which I did outside of video control, I, I might add, everything is, is, is massively in sync. I mean, one section where we'll really know is when we come into this part here. Perfect. There's a part where I'm using the gravity library. So here. Perfect. I was waiting to hear the gravity. There was some quite, some quite tight motion sinks there. It's perfectly in time. Um, and, you know, in terms of my activity use, bearing in mind I'm capturing the screen capture of my screen. Um, you know, and we're running a video, and this session itself, there's a lot going on here, lots of different libraries. Um, we've got um, Vienna Ensemble uh, running on a separate machine, helping me out there, but in terms of resources, I've got loads left. I could continue, you know, adding tracks and, and working to this. Um, essentially, that is that is it, really, when it comes to, uh, to Video Slave. You know, um, it does get more complicated. You can add... Um, lots. Th these are. This is like a playlist here, um, so you can start adding additional videos to this list. Um, and in terms of your timecode starts, you could kind of choose a different uh, timecode place here to start your video. So say you've got a second reel, um, sort of four clips down the line, you might be able to set a start a start uh, timecode here, then come into Pro Tools, set a marker at exactly the right timecode. And it just automatically switched. So we call this 2M1, second reel. I need to actually turn on my markers. Um, oh, I've turned off tempo. No, markers on, please. Yeah, say we've got 2M1 starts here. You know, I could set it in here th th that that is going to be my clip. So, you know, for the next film I'm working on next year, it's going to be very much like that. I'm going to be sent it clip by clip um, as opposed to one file. So in terms of dubbing, that is perfect. You know, I've just got 
this is how long my you know my, my particular clip is starts this time code ends of that time code you know I can match it up in my actual Pro Tools session and then just export the cues by the by the exactly the length they are and put it straight into the dub really really useful um, so yeah I want to literally give a big shout out to non-lethal applications and their video slave 2 software um, it's so important you know I, I would say this is this is as important as buying Pro Tools in my eyes. Um, I wish I'd done it a long, long time ago. It would have saved me um, kind of countless kind of issues, I suppose, in terms of both resources on the free resources on the system. Um, and I think it's just it is basically down to codecs. I think Pro Tools just isn't as au fait with with lots of different types of uh, of codec. Uh, whereas Video Slave is going to kind of read. It's kind of like VLC in a way. It reads everything um, and just picks it up straight away. You know what. What resolution it's in, what what the um, codec is, what the kind of uh, what the audio um, tracks are. It just brings it in and reads it and plays it, which is what you want. It gives you time to get into your work and and, and get on, which is what's important. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope it's been useful. Um, I will put a link down in the bottom of the video um, to both th where you can buy this software. I really think you should. Um, as well as any kind of links to any official documentation that they that they kind of produced. Um, there's some very, very easy kind of setup guys for both Pro Tools, uh, Logic, uh, Cubase, and there was another there which I can't quite remember, but you'll be able to set it up. You'll be up and running within 10 minutes. Um, it didn't take me long to kind of figure it out. Even when I had those issues um, with this TC, um, and I had to kind of manually set the, 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 the start time of the video, um, it still didn't take me long to kind of figure that out. Um, you know, as I say, oh, it's actually slightly off. I mean, if I go into into preferences again, into overlays, I need to move the kind of horizontal position. That's better. Um, so it's just moved that that time code slightly uh, along a little bit for me. Really easy. Um, literally those three buttons. That one I use the most. So right now, the this this frame is in my left hand screen in full screen. Um, you know, um, I'm going to put all the links up together. I hope you'll kind of uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, follow the next video. Um, and uh, yeah, until then, take care. I shall see you soon. Okay, guys, bye-bye.